Good evening, everyone. My name is Hainisha Malone. I am the Vice President of the West Garfield Park Youth Council, and we believe that we are the solution to the issues in our community. Our theme is Nothing With Us Without Us. The West Garfield Park Youth Council is comprised, I'm sorry, is sponsored by Fathers Who Care, which is a nonprofit organization located on the west side of Chicago within the West Garfield Park community. Again, everyone, my name is Heine Malone, and I'm the Vice President of the West Garfield Park Youth Council. The West Garfield Park Youth Council is comprised of young people from our community whose focus and concern is youth leadership and a voice within the community to reduce senseless violence and illegal substance use. We invite people from all over, especially young people, to come in and see what we are all about. Our show will be scheduled every Thursday at 7 p.m. Again, that is every Thursday at 7 p.m. We would like to encourage calls from people watching to leave their questions and comments at 312-738-1060. Again, that number is 312-738-1060, located on the bottom of the screen. Our show can also be viewed online at www.cantv.org backslash live. Again, that website is www.cantv.org backslash live. Well, everyone, I would like to introduce my guest for today's show, Mr. Walter Jones, the Executive Director of Fathers Who Care. Thank you so very much, Hanisha. Always a pleasure to be back on the show with you guys. Thank you. You guys have been extremely busy. Yeah extremely busy for the last few weeks. Yeah. You all have been uh, going to displays uh, with the maritime uh, trainings. Mm -hmm. So most of you young folks are preparing yourselves for opportunities uh, this summer on, yep. on being deckhands on yachts. Yeah. Uh, so you guys have been out, there, out with the, uh, I think you was out in displaying somewhere. right? Um, Rosemont, yeah. I think it is. Yeah, well, you, you all was out in the, yes, in the maritime yeah. training facility yeah. where you all were being trained uh, uh, on what it takes to be a deckhand CP uh, and all that other good stuff, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So tell me, how did that feel? Ooh. It, it's fun to know we um we finna be um, certified in CPR and AED. We're doing... um. We're, special, we're specializing in it right now. We do it on the mannequins. We use the AED kits. Mm -hmm. We've learned about the different positioning of the boat so that if we were to be out on the water and we seen somebody out in the water, we'd be able to <clears throat> tell them the position of where the person are, where the person is, I'm sorry. And um, if we are interested in getting the job and we were to let our interview our interviewer know that, they would be very impressed, and they told us about the different vocabulary and about how fires um, fires are very rare on boats, but when it do occur, they taught us about that. They taught us how to handle it, how to get everyone out the way. Um, they taught us about um, the water, the engineer rooms. They taught they really just taught us about everything, getting us ready um, until we have our uh, I don't know what to call it, but. It's like all of the people who are looking for um, employees and deck hands for their boats, they're all going to come out downtown at the Yacht Club and they're going to try to hire us. And we're going to tell them what we know and see if it is enough for them to hire us. So that's an interview. Yeah. <clears throat> so so you all will be graduating yep. next week. Mm -hmm. Next and week is our last day. Yeah. So you all have had an experience of a lifetime. Yeah. <clears throat> which is the purpose for it. Mm -hmm. You know, it was our concern. Uh, some folks, we all had came together. I mean, you all had experienced some good things last year uh, in that day. you were all in career and development uh, mm -hmm. uh, process. Yeah. And that's when we was at the uh, Monroe Harbor and the Belmont Harbor, which I'm really excited uh, for you young, young folks. And we plan uh, to do it again. Yeah. Where we're going to, uh, after this, uh, uh, training, maritime training, mm -hmm. uh, to be a deckhand. Uh, it's our hope that we will be bringing back some of the younger ones, yeah. uh, some of the younger folks who didn't get a chance to, to experience this uh, endeavor of training. Mm -hmm. We'll bring them back next time, and they will have an opportunity to go back into the uh, career and development phase. 
in that they would do so many weeks. I'm hoping that it still would be from six to eight weeks and yeah. that all of the young folks would still be available. Mm -hmm. And we do have a list of young people who yeah. are ready. So it's our hope that, uh, uh, that we kick that off uh, sometime this month mm -hmm. and, and that the young folks who uh, wasn't available from, I think it's from 12 up, mm -hmm. uh, will also have an opportunity to participate and some of the activities we'll be doing, like you guys were doing, learning how to sail and, yeah. and getting opportunities to drive folks' yachts. Yeah. But this time, some of you all will be, be working on them now. We'll be working on them now, yeah. and you'll be deckhands. But again, I, I, I thank you so much for that opportunity uh, uh, to be here with you tonight. I had to share that information because yeah. I do know this has been uh, a season where you guys have really had to step it up. Yeah, we did. I mean, there's been so many things going on around and about, but you guys have been faithful uh, coming together and getting out to, uh, to the uh, maritime training facility in spite of the hours or so that it took you to get there yeah. and the hours or so that it took you to get back. But I think it all was for a good cause because yeah. now... It's just exposing you all to different options. Right. But but please carry on with your time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Del. All right. Again, everyone, my name is Heinrich Malone, and I am the vice president of the West Garfield Park Youth Council. You are watching a live interactive call and television network brought to you by CanTV21. During the next 25 minutes, we are going to discuss career opportunities and trainings. We invite our callers again, our, our viewers again, watching to call in with your questions and comments at 312-738-1060. Again, that is 312-738-1060. Our phone lines are now open. So today's topic again is on career opportunities and trainings. And my first question for you today is, who are you and what is your purpose for existing? <clears throat> Thank you so much for that question. I am a father, I'm a husband, I'm a man of faith, I'm a community social worker, I am an activist for, uh, uh, that's committed to social change, uh, I'm a lover of the people, I am one who just works tirelessly, I, I, I pride myself on being a servant, uh, that means that I put my life into the work. I haven't been putting my life to the work. I don't know what else to do but to put my life into the work because right. I love what I do. I've been on a mission for many, many years to empower young folks, uh, hoping to lay good foundation for uh, these young people to take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. uh, that I know so many of our young people in our community uh, are disenfranchised, don't have options. I've been labeled, been singled out, ostracized. Mm -hmm. So I believe that I'm that person that continue to speak truth to power to make sure that these young people like yourselves have opportunities. That's why I'm so proud of the fact that you all have opportunities and have had opportunities throughout uh, uh, last year, uh, physical year 22 to 23, mm -hmm. in that you all were participants of the internship program, SCAN TV program, yeah, uh, uh, maritime training, and other opportunities. Yep. Uh, that's what I work on. That's what I'm committed to. That's what I'm trying to make happen. Uh, I am also a brother. Uh, I'm also a community uh, leader. I'm also one who, who uh, believes in just doing what we can for the least of them. I'm often on the street helping those who are homeless will be at an event tomorrow, helping those who are uh, men as we kick off Men's Health Month. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be out providing different services and resources uh, for men who don't have some of the resources that they need. So I'm really, really committed to doing whatever I can do to make a difference in the lives of young people. Right. Uh, so who am I? I am a servant for social change. I like that. So, what type of opportunities and trainings are available for young people in our community? Well, it's rather disheartening sometimes because the opportunities are limited. Mm -hmm. uh, there are not as many opportunities in our communities as one may think. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of organizations, and I, I, I commend the organizations for providing services to whomever they provide services for. A great many of them provide services, of course, for young people, possibly in elementary school and those who may be uh, in junior high and some high school. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's a good thing. I'm 
I'm happy that they're doing that. Yeah. However, we kind of provide our, our, our uh, at Fathers Who Care, uh, we provide opportunities for the at-risk young people. Yeah. Those who uh, folks have really ostracized and turned their backs on. Those between the ages of 14 to 24 who may have some background, who may have been troubled, who may have some mental health issues, who may need to be uh, uh, nurtured, supported, given some tough love. I mean, we love on them. We are we try to do the best we can with them. But sometimes you have to be able to flip the squip, the strip. Uh, in that one minute, you may be really, really loving to them and mm-hmm. uh, accommodating. But within one minute, you have to take a stand and, and, and hold them accountable for yep. some of the things that they're doing. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, again, there's very few programs that are providing all tournaments. I thank God that we have basketball, football, baseball, all of that. Mm-hmm. But what about for the young people who are not participants in that area? Right. So I thank Fathers Who Care, the West Garfield Park Youth Council. You all have been doing a, a, a yeoman's job for many, many years. I can call off some other organizations who have been providing services to young people, uh, and they're still providing services on them. Uh, I just think we, we, we might want to focus on some of the topics you just raised or the concern you just raised. What are some of the services out there for folks who may be experiencing some hardships? Right. Some folks out there who may be coming from broken homes, some folks who may be poverty stricken, yeah. some folks who may have a, a background, some folks who may have some other issues going on. And I really do believe it's so many of you all out here mm-hmm. uh, who are experiencing various different concerns. And so uh, there are some programs. We have an internship program that we're really closing down now uh, for the year. And it's our hope that we'll get a chance to, par- to partner with some others and or re- uh, revitalize mm-hmm. our intern program uh, in July. So right now we're trying to taper down and, and just trying to do some of our end of the year activities and end of the year uh, updates and, and making sure that we keep all of the good things that we're doing available yeah. for folks who may want to stop by and who may want to be involved and who may need some additional support. I really do believe that there's programs inside of some schools Schools are providing some real nice opportunities. Yeah. Uh, there's, an, uh, I think you got one summer in Chicago coming up. Mm-hmm. You have uh, some different social service agencies that are providing opportunities for young folks. But I think it takes all of us uh, to kind of pool our resources and all of us to create a safe and healthy environment for our children because mm-hmm. they are our children. Right. Uh, so I'm really committed to that. Okay. So are what do you think, though? The question is, I mean, you're asking me, and I'm speaking as an elder, mm-hmm. but you know how sometimes you young people have a mind of your own. Yeah. You know, some folks may not want to come around elders all the time because we have this tendency to love too hard. Right. Or be putting too much on the table, or may not be as sensitive to some of you young people. Mm-hmm. So what do you think? Um, so what type of opportunities and training are available for young people in our community? Um, I feel like, like you said, it's not as many opportunities as we think it is. <coughs> like, it's lots of ba- basketball um, basketball centers and stuff like that, but it's nothing that's, mm-hmm. it's not a lot of stuff that that's main focus is on mental health. Okay. Like, they, they do stuff that um, I feel like it distracts them from it, and distracting them from it won't help them. You have to do stuff to help them, like talk to them about it. I don't feel like it's as many... Um, organizations that's like that um i feel like you can go into schools and to counseling counselors know a lot about it um my personal counselor at my school um her name is miss mahone she's a super great help she has given kids um a lot of internship opportunities for the summertime you michelle clark yeah michelle clark um she gives people a lot of internship opportunities she um she's also a she's also a great person to talk to um, you should like always go to your school, but sometimes um, I know kids get real um, emotional about talking to someone about mm-hmm. it. But talking to someone will always help. Um, I also feel like it's not looked at enough because you know uh, me and my friend was talking about how you know we are we we are the future, mm-hmm. and if we don't have someone to show us the way, like we know that it's people who's brought um, 
brought brought down generational trauma down mm -hmm. to us. And then generational we, trauma. Yeah, and if we're taught the same thing, then how what what cycle will we break out into if we don't know what cycle we know what cycle we're in, but we don't know what cycle we'll be in if we break out of it because we don't know nothing else but what we're in. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about how. Like nothing's gonna change unless we change it, and we're gonna have to find it for ourselves if nobody else is gonna find it for us because we see that it's not a lot of um, attention being put on programs that help us and like uplift us and you know stuff like that. So I, I agree with you when you say <coughs> it's not as many. Well, you, you you started talking about some things, and obviously you have a lot to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about mental health and and generational trauma. Yeah. We also relate that to generational curses, yeah. meaning that you know some of us unfortunately have come from uh, communities and or relationships and families where we have experienced a great deal of trauma, yeah. and we have never addressed those concerns. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why it's really important that folks are involved in trauma-informed care. Yeah. Uh, you talked about mental health. Uh, <clears throat> you've noticed that last month we have uh, dedicated the whole month yeah. Uh, to mental health. We have had TV shows on mental health. We've had our weekly youth council meetings. We've had re uh, weekly recruitment meetings with our young people. We've mm -hmm. been out in activities. And all month we have been talking about mental health. We've had different guest speakers to come in and share uh, the different concerns that young people are experiencing in relationship to mental health. Right. And I do believe all of us are experiencing some pot uh, a PTSD uh, post-traumatic stress right. uh, as a result of being so confined through through uh, COVID yep. uh, uh, and still going through it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think all of us experiencing different things at different times, but I thank God for His grace and His mercy that we can call on God in our times of need and that the church has always been that hospital right. for those of us who are experiencing whatever changes we're experiencing. Unfortunately, some folks don't believe in addressing uh, uh, their mental health concerns they're in denial. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but they do go to church. Yeah. So I'm thankful that they are uh, seeking some higher power mm -hmm. in dealing with some of these concerns. But my interest at this point is not necessarily that I have nothing against adults. I just, I'm just more concerned with making sure young people have an opportunity. Right. I'm more concerned with, in spite of uh, the things that are going on and the people that come around who mean no well to the young people, uh, I'm more concerned with making sure the young people have an outlet and young people are dispelling, are dispelling this negative myth about mental health and, and, and receiving supportive services. Because I, I personally tell you, uh, I, I'm, I'm experiencing various different uh, levels of it myself and dealing with young people and dealing with the different ups and downs that life bring you and then being so compassionate you know I, it's impossible for me to be numb about the things that's going around the, the country shooting up the hospitals shooting up the grocery stores shooting up the churches I mean so much is going on right now you have to be living on an island not to understand right. right so uh, I can understand what you mean about uh, uh, generational trauma and, 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 and folks experiencing a great deal of anxiety. Mm -hmm. So are these opportunities and trainings available for teenagers who may have a background? Well, uh, that's a good question because a lot of them, it depends on what the background, what the backgrounds are. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and no one should always be just labeled as a bad person because they make mistakes in life. All of us make mistakes in life. All right. of us will make mistakes in life. But young people should always be afforded an opportunity to, uh, to do what they can to get their, themselves together. I believe in second chances. I believe in people have uh, different things that they're battling with. I also believe that the programs that we're talking about, we don't judge them. Mm. I mean, we, we, we try to <clears throat> exp uh, uh, share some tough love from time to time. Yeah. But we try to also have a mixture. Mm -hmm. We try to have some folks in there who be the, the good yeah. Mentor and another one be the firm mentor. Yeah. Uh, so and and that works in, in my opinion. However, it don't work when when folks' intentions are not true. I mean, in order to be in this business as long as we have, uh, we have to have a love for the work, and we do have a love for the work. And so I want to encourage those who are watching, 
that if you're going through some changes and you do have some uh, issues in your past or you're facing some things, don't give up. Give us a call at, at Fathers Who Care at 773-287-5821. Uh, 773-287-5821. I know you've been watching us for many years, and yes, we're still here. We're still laboring for the young people. Yeah, it is tedious. Yes, it is a long, long, long. It's a long process. Yeah. And yes, we will continue to do what we can to power these young folks. We're just thankful that we are uh, blessed to be here, and that God has continued to shower us with opportunities to be a blessing to those who are less fortunate. Yep. So, how will these opportunities and trainings motivate the young people to work, to want to work towards a better future? Well, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm kind of glad you kind of brought that up, too. We talked about that earlier uh, when we talked about the experiencing you are experiencing with a group of young people uh, and becoming deckhands on yachts. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I think that's important uh, that young people have options. Yeah. So some of you all would be doing work on the yachts this year uh, as far as working. Mm -hmm. Some of you all will be experiencing the pleasures of riding around on the yachts. Yeah. Some of you all will be doing some uh, other kind of work through the internship program and uh, youth development opportunities. Some of you all will be also actively involved in some of the summer jobs that the, uh, the city is offering and others are, are bringing to the table. Mm -hmm. So it's an array of things going on that we want to make sure that during this summer, which it appears it's going to be a hot summer. Yeah, it is. It's going to be a hot summer. One of the young women in our program was shot last Saturday. Wow. And, uh, of course, thank God she's all right, uh, men, meaning that she didn't, she didn't die. Right. But I can imagine the trauma that she's experiencing yeah. of being a victim of, of this. And she was part of y'all program. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, and so uh, we just have to keep praying and keep trusting that God will continue to shield you all as you all are traveling up and down these streets and that you all will allow yourselves to, to do the best you can and be your best selves and don't be easily led uh, astray. So what kind of things can we do in our community to engage our young people and save lives? Well, I think uh, young people can reach young people. So I believe in peer leadership. I've always believed in peer leadership. I always believe that young people should be able to go out into the community, that they should be able to actually be that light to the other young people, that they should be able to go out and do recreational activities like you all would do. You all would go out and do pitching to young people, go out and talk to young people about some of the issues that young people are facing in the community. I like the fact that you young people have your weekly meetings, your weekly leadership meetings, your weekly Zoom meetings, uh, the meetings that you all come together and talk about the topics of the day. I'm so thankful that we have young leaders, youth leaders, who are committed to stepping up to be in that support system for you all because the work that you're doing, they could never make enough money for it mm -hmm. because the work that they do for you all, they're being everything they can to you. And so I just believe that as long as we stick together and keep on thinking about our young people, I think everything is going to be fine. Yeah, I agree. Um, I want to mention the internship that's going on at Fathers Who Care, but with the West Garfield Park Youth Council, it is a internship for um, teenagers and adults 16 to 14 years old, and it is a training to learn. 16 to what now? 24. Yeah, I thought, oh. you, I thought you said 14. <laughs> <laughs> but 16 to 24, and um, you learn about budgeting, financing your money, how to how to save, how mm -hmm. to spend. Um, you learn about, you do mock resumes, you do mock interviews, we do positive affirmations for ourselves every day. And you learn a lot about um, the workforce, and you go and they take you out to the sites if you have a particular... Um, company that you want to work with, they could take you there and help you get the job as well. And this is with Fathers Who Care from Monday through Friday from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. And it is for West Side residents only. And to get in contact for more information, you can contact us at 773-287-5821. Again, that number is 773-287-5821. And you can ask for Miss Truel or you can email her at princess.fwc at gmail.com. Again, <coughs> that email is princess.fwc at gmail.com. 
Okay. I think that's a good thing uh, for these young people. Yeah. Uh, we've been closing out this internship program. We was fortunate enough to be able to bring an array of young people together from CCA, yeah. and an alternative school from Michelle Clark, from Western House, uh, from different local schools uh, that were looking to try to build some skills mm -hmm. uh, and, and also have opportunities uh, to strengthen themselves. Uh, and then go out and possibly find jobs, which some of them have. Yeah. Uh, I still think is uh, it's not enough. Uh, but we've been trying to get them uh, developed. We want these young folks to develop some soft skills yeah. uh, so that they can go to some different jobs that they may uh, want to take part in at this time. Uh, you know, so that's that's our hope yeah. uh, to inspire and direct and, and, and empower the young people. That's just what we want to do. Now, I'm glad that you brought that up. What does it mean to empower young people? Well, uh, empowering young folks is to challenge them, mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, to continuously challenge young people, to continuously give them opportunities, but also to, in, 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 to encourage them uh, to be the best selves, to encourage them to, to do the best that they can with what they got until they get something better, mm -hmm. uh, to encourage them that everything don't happen overnight, and sometimes we can really... Uh, be overwhelmed with what's going on in the day, but we want right. to encourage folks, particularly young people, to just say, yes, uh, I really want to do something different. I do want to be around those who are trying to make a difference. Yeah. It's hard for you all today, real hard for you all, because you all are battling so many issues right now and peer pressure to boot. Mm -hmm. uh, peer, you've got all kind of stuff going. you got bullying going on. you got substance abuse going on. you got yep. young folks who are parents too. So it's just so many things that are impacting you all that, uh, that are taking you away from some of your goals or uh, yep. uh, being your best self. So, mm -hmm. uh, yes. So why is it important to have programs and high-risk communities for young people to be a part of? Because they need them. Yep. Because they don't have them. Because folks think there's a magic wand that things just change overnight. No, when you're dealing with these young people in the community that we're in, on the west side of Chicago, particularly in uh, uh, Garfield Park, uh, Londale community, Austin community, there are so many issues uh, that young people are facing and it's not an overnight fix. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not something you can say, let's have a piece of party or have this or that. It yeah. does, it, it, these young folks need counselors. These young folks need teachers. They need social workers. They need all the services that they can get. Mm -hmm. They really need somebody who is readily available in all fairness 24 hours a day. Yeah. And they got they have to want the help too. Yeah, of course. If they don't want it, then it's just everything that the person who's trying to help them is saying is going one ear and out the other because they don't care to get help. <coughs> but but I think for the most part you all do want it. Yeah. I don't most believe. Most of us do. Yeah, I, I I I believe you all do want it. So with that being said, I, I'm thinking that the opportunity. That the problem is the lack of opportunities, mm -hmm. and so what we're we're advocating for we're advocating for making sure that that hard to reach young group of sixteen to twenty four year old who are not being cherry picked those who don't have all of the options that others may have who may not have all of the resources who may be experiencing whatever it is that they're experiencing mm -hmm. uh, given opportunities to experience something better. Right. All right. Now I do know everyone can't be everything. And I understand that, but I do understand that we all are in this together. Yep. And, and each one should teach one. And so if we really, who we say we are, that we are those salt, those are, uh, uh, those mentors and leaders in the community, let's make sure we're providing the support for those who need it the most. Right, because if it's lack of opportunities or lack of resources in the community, then they get discouraged and feel like it's nothing for them to look forward to to try to get help. Absolutely. So I think you are right about um, them actually wanting it and stuff. Absolutely. So if someone is watching and is in need of counseling and or your support, how can they reach you? Well, give us a call at 773-287-5821. Our office number is 773-287-5821. Or they can contact us at... Uh, uh, princess.fwc at gmail.com uh, princess.fwc at gmail.com uh, we do have an array of some young people study reaching out for young people to come in uh, we know that you're going through some things we want you to know that it's okay your change is coming uh, but I want to close out by saying to folks please beware of the hackers the scammers 
uh, those who are, are, are lurking to take advantage of you during this time of the year. Uh, please keep your head, your eyes open, uh, stay alert. Uh, when you're traveling, be careful with the carjackers out there and do the best you can to do what you can to save one life. Each life matters. Yep. And if you are just tuning in, our guest tonight on the show is Mr. Walter Jones, and we are discussing career opportunities and trainings. We would like to thank our viewers for watching. For additional information about our Youth Council, please contact us again at 773-287-5821. Again, that number is 773-287-5821 and ask for Ms. Princess. Thank you and see you again next week, same time, same station. Bye. Good night, God bless, and let's keep doing the good work. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, everyone.